welcome back to the class. Uh, I have been uh, showing you different uh, mechanisms for fluorescence enhancement okay, in presence of metal ions. So, here is another uh, very important mechanism. Let me first draw it, then I will explain it. Okay. Okay. So, this is a particular type of compounds with a spiro linkage. Okay. This is a spiro. Okay. This is a spiro compound and they are also known as rhodamine. So, spiro compound, spiro. This spiro linkage is very crucial, very important. How? this particular compound is colored white. When the spiro bond is intact, then the color will be white, okay, absolutely white color and it is non fluorescent. However, in presence of proton, that is in presence of an acid or a metal ion, acid or a metal ion, okay. what happens? The spiro bond breaks this way. All right. So, metal can bind H plus or instead of or like this, I will draw, I will write like this or M N plus and they will bind here. Okay. And this is important. Okay. aromatic okay Let 
let me draw it nicely. Okay. My drawing is not world's best, but uh, at least you can understand what I have done it. So, what is the changes? The spiro bond breaks and it is reversible. Okay. In, in basic condition, it is a white color and the spiro bond will again form in absence of a metal ion. If I put just acid or remove the metal ion and then make it basic, it will come here. That is what it is. And this color is pink. Color is pink. Maybe I will write this. Color is something like this. No? Now it will happen. Color is pink of this material and see this elongated conjugation. This is very high fluorescence. Okay. So, this pyro bond, this pyro compound, there are many possibilities there because I can change the R group by many, by, by other group so that this, this is the receptor site this receptor site can be recognized by a particular metal ion. Okay? And when you give that, this bond breaks and make, a, make a this kind of molecule okay? with an extended conjugation. Because of that, it is a very dark color, pink color and highly fluorescent, while this, color, this is white and non-fluorescent. Okay. So, now here is an compound this is called rhodamine beta rhodamine B hydrazide. Okay. So, similarly rhodamine G there are many compounds like that. Let me write, let me write. These are very important why? Because these are uh, these has photo stability means they do not decompose and they change from 0 fluorescent to high fluorescent. So, they are very, very sensitive and can be easily detected with naked eye because you give a white color and then you give a metal ion, it color turns to pink. So, you can easily detect, you can say that spiro bond is broken and metal is bound. That is why I am observing a pink color and it is highly fluorescent. So, both naked eye observation as well as the fluorescence measurements are very easy now. Okay. Let me write the compound. N NH two hydro okay. Rhodamine B hydrazide Okay. Here you go. All right. Yes. So this is what it is. Okay. This is rhodamine B hydrazide. Hydrazide is a hydrazine derivative. NH2NH2 is hydrazine. So this is rhodamine 
also this name is commercially available. Rhodamine B hydrazide. This hydrazide I can further react it with another reagent. So, we have a we can make a large number of this kind of spiro compound okay? and in uh, this, this moiety likes copper. So, so, when I put copper 2 plus, okay, if I remove copper 2 plus and basic it will come to it there, it is a white color. Okay, you put copper and again again not there not there again it will become Okay, this one double bond N, single bond NH2, here it is a O minus, so copper binds here, okay. copper will bind here. And then of course, other copper chloride, so two chloride will be here and all that. So, copper binds here and same thing as before okay okay and here and it gives a it gives a very strong color copper. So, copper can be and with high fluorescence. So, copper can be easily detected. So, here is a compound. So, this kind of compound here is the one uh, spiro compound which are more recent than those other fluorophore that I have been discussing. So, this is a exactly different bond breaking and bond making. So, uh, the, uh, depending upon bond breaking, it will become colored because of extended conjugation, it become colored and after bond making, bond making with base, with removal of copper from here and then make it basic, it will come back here. So, it is a reversible with chemicals of course and is highly sensitive. Okay, so, for different metal ion, what we could do? We could actually change this part. This part can be changed, keeping this spiro bond same. We can put aldehyde to make sieb base, so on and so forth. So, many, many spiro compounds have been synthesized for different type of metal ions. So, this is another very important uh, compound. Okay. While talking about spiro bond, I will show you one example that we did, we carried out. Okay. We carried out like this. Let me first draw the molecule. Let me draw the molecule. N C 
Sam. No, I have done mistake. Let me write the aromatic like this. Okay. So, now here we have done with a rhodamine 6 G okay, rhodamine 6 G and again the rhodamine. I will draw one picture and others I will do cartoon. Okay, maybe I will uh, make this picture and then cartoon to manage, otherwise it will take a long time. N. All right, let me draw this also very diligently. Okay. Then, then spiro bond spiro bond here. oxygen, no not oxygen, double bond and then this, okay. this and So, here is the same compound, okay. similar compound. So, this compound or this compound are same, okay. except that 1, 2, except that this one I have not drawn. Yeah. Okay. So, this compound similar to this compound, except that through there here, I have attached through this, all right. So, I have attached through this. So, this is my cartoon, cartoon. So, this compound 3, trees of this compound has been synthesized, okay. and that synthesis is not very difficult, by the way, is not at all difficult. So, when I put there, so when we take this, this is very pale color, okay, pale color because the krypton has some color, yellowish, and fluorescent is off, fluorescence off. Fluorescence off. fluorescence of all right off now if i put mercury 2 in aqueous medium it can bind mercury 2 there are so many other metal ions okay metal ions in biology our in our body 
transition metals, alkali metals, so on and so forth, but only mercury 2 plus binds it and breaks it, okay, breaks these things, breaks this pyro bond and binds like the, like here, it breaks here, okay, and mercury binds. So, mercury 1 mercury will bind here, another mercury will bind here, 3 mercury can bind mercury ions, 1 each it can bind, it is a dark purple, dark pink color and very strong fluorescence, fluorescence will be on. So, when mercury is present, fluorescence is on. So, mercury and what is the detection limit? This is very important, this detection limit is 3 ppm. Okay, 3 ppm parts per million, not, not ppm is ppb I think, yes, ppm is nothing, ppb parts per billion. Okay. I will make sure I am telling the right figures, if not I am going to tell you tomorrow, next time, but I think it is all right. 3 ppb, 3 ppb is the detection limit of mercury. All right, for this particular sensor, it is mercury specific sensor. Okay. So, this mercury specific sensor can detect, can detect mercury 2 plus in water. up to 3 ppb and EPA of United States of America Environmental Protection Agency, which most countries recognize EPA limitation, EPA their limitation is is 6 ppb, that means up to 6 ppb of mercury in water, we are okay, all right. But we can recognize even 3 ppb, half of that we can recognize. So, this is a very, very powerful material, you can understand that. This is a, this is a very important fluorescent material which can detect mercury 2 in water. So, now we had used this, this, part, uh, this particular thing in vitro studies. So, we took some HEC HEC 293 cell lines, cell lines, HEC 29, HEC 293, what is that? HEC 293, HEC means human embryonic kidney, human embryonic kidney kidney cell we took a cell we took a cell that is human embryonic kidney in plain english language a poor a poor child died okay a, a child unfortunately died in netherlands and his, his parents donated that for uh, mankind. So, that embryonic kidney cell were collected. 
So once it collected, it, uh, it is kept in Canada. So from Canada, it can it distributes throughout the world. We also have it, and we collaborated with a group from South Korea. So South Korea have this human embryonic kidney cell, like many other countries. We also have it, but since my collaborator from South of uh, South uh, Korea, Seoul. So we uh, used, uh, we collaborated with him and he got it from Canada. So what happens when we incubate, first we incubate human embryonic kidney cell with this uh, dye, let us call it dye, with this particular dye. So once you in the biology, in the biology what you do? If you want to put something in the biology, you have to first test that that compound I am putting is not toxic, okay. Cytotoxicity is not there because if it is toxic then there will be problem because this is a uh, dead cell, okay, uh, not dead cell, cell from a dead man, dead kid. But when we give it to a live person, if that is cytotoxic, then there will be some side effects and all that. So we first test the toxicity of this, uh, of this dye in the human cell. For that, we this HK293 cell lines were incubated there are methods, okay, it is called MTT assay. So, what you did? You sell this viability is 100, 100 means good, very good, and below 100 means it will be toxic. So, when we tested along with concentration, concentration, we find you have to do that also same. That means it is not toxic up to this kind at least up to this concentration, okay. So fine. After that, we incubate, we added, we charge to that cell, we charge mercury solution. And mercury went there, mercury went there and put a, and put uh, and reacted with the dye because those bonds were broken and it become pink color and all that. So the cell, you ca I cannot show you here, but I have pictures, I will upload it, okay. So cell, so there were, you can easily see that the, uh, that him, uh, that kidney cell has some patches of red color because in the kidney cell mercury goes, it reacts with that particular, uh, particular uh, compound fluorescent and can, uh, and it become red color. That you can look at by something called confocal microscopy. Confocal microscopy. confocal microscope say. So a confocal microscope, if you look at it, you can see very clearly. That means if somebody is unfortunately has mercury inside, gone inside, he will die, okay. That fellow will die. So first what you have to do? We have to locate it. So we will inject this dye. Why we will inject the dye? Because this dye is no toxicity, okay. We have tested. So, we will inject that dye, the dye will go everywhere, and then you inject mercury. I mean, uh, uh, dye will go everywhere, and mercury, wherever mercury is there, it will glow, it will fluoresce. So, that we can see from confocal microscopy. 
So, you can see and you can know concentration also from its, there are ways to know its concentration. So, we again treat that for mercury removal from body. Once you remove the mercury from body, then again you, again you charge the dye little bit and then again see confocal microscopy. Now, when I am seeing through confocal microscopy, no red spots. That means, my all mercury are removed from my body. So, I am all right. Okay. So, these are, these are the techniques fluorescence can detect. So, this is a real biological experiment to show you how, uh, how we can detect mercury and then that will help us remove mercury from body. Once we remove, then we again test and see mercury absent. All right. Thank you for today.